Hi, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Today I want to answer a question about whether or not I think you need a degree and I want to tell you a little bit about how you get to some place where you're really not supposed to be. Okay, so today I want to answer a question by, uh, uh, by Yuval. Yuval has sent in like, like 10 questions. So, yeah, man, you sent in a lot of questions. Uh, but there's one here uh, that, I want to, uh, that I want to address because it's, you know, I, I guess I feel kind of passionately about it. Uh, you'd asked, uh, you said, in my country, a lot of people go to coding boot camps to learn mobile development and flooding the job market while not knowing proper coding basics. What is your opinion on the question? Is it worth it to hire a person without a CS degree or three years experience in order to pay him or her less? Uh, and I guess my answer to that is yes. I mean, I, I'm not a big fan of degrees. I mean, when I hire somebody, I don't think about what degree they have. And the re one of the big reasons is because is I do not have a computer science degree. Uh, just to give you some of my background, I went, so, you know, I went from high school, joined the army, uh, in, you know, in various jobs in between, you know, like working at McDonald's when I was a teenager and stuff. I uh, went to university, uh, uh, three different universities because we moved around a lot. And then I graduated from university with my degree in history before coming to the UK. Now, the reason I went into the army and not to college immediately afterwards is because I didn't think I was smart enough. And this is, you know, kind of embarrassing to admit, but you know, your teachers always tell you, you know, in high school, you know, or at least they did me or they, you know, they do this a lot. They talk about, um, you know, if you don't get good grades, if you don't apply yourself, then you won't go to college and then you end up working in a gas station and you won't ever make anything of yourself. So I didn't even apply to any colleges or universities. It was just like not an option. I mean, to be honest with you, I barely made it through high school. So it was, uh, and it wasn't because I was dumb. It was just, you know, very shy and introverted and it just felt like the thing that was not for me and I was just, I just didn't apply myself. But in the end, I did graduate. And my best friend didn't graduate, so he, he actually ended up dropping out. But I did graduate, and then I did join the Army. Uh, when I was in the Army, uh, I told them I wanted to be a cop. I don't know why I don't know why I said I wanted to be a cop, but in the end, they, they gave me some language tests and found uh, that I was really good at learning languages, uh, but even though I'd failed high school French. So, uh, so they taught me uh, Chinese Mandarin, and then later on, I, I took Vietnamese. But then after four years, when I made the decision to get out, I got out and I, was, I went into uh, college, I went to community college first to learn, uh, I wanted to learn journalism, but in the end I set my expectations lower and thought I'll, I'll study history and then, you know, if I could, you know, I like history, history is kind of related to journalism uh, and, you know, I could, you know, probably get a job easier that way. So, so I went there and I went to um, Leeward Community College in Hawaii where, where I was in the Army uh, and then uh, eventually moved to San Antonio, Texas where I finished a couple more years and I finished off in Missouri uh, before moving here. And because for family reasons we had to move to England uh, you know, afterwards. So I had just got my degree in history uh, with a uh, minor in psychology. So I moved to England and somebody had told me once that if you're, when you're looking for a job, you should just apply to everything, like whether or not you're qualified, uh, which is, which I thought that's not, you know, that sounds like really bad advice. But when I moved to England and before moving to England, I had to apply for a visa. So I had to send, like, I had to, apply, I had to show that I was applying for jobs. So I, the only jobs I could think of as a history major was like museums. So I, I applied to all the museums in the Oxfordshire area. And, uh, and most of them came back saying they only hire volunteers. But it proved that I was looking and I was able to come out to the UK. Uh, and so we, so we had no money, we had a lot of debt, uh, and, you know, and I had a baby. This, you know, we had a brand new baby, uh, my, my oldest boy now. This is back in 1998, to give some perspective. So, he, uh, so, so we had a baby and, uh, and, and no job and no income. So within the first week, I got the first job I could, which was packing, uh, packing yogurt at a dairy factory, like a factory, packing yogurt into boxes. So I had my degree in history. I couldn't find a job anywhere. I was packing yogurt into boxes from uh, 10 o'clock at night to 6 o'clock in the morning uh, at, the, uh, at the local one. And the reason I took that midnight shift was because it paid more. It paid, I think, six pounds an hour, which, was, which wasn't bad. But I was making, after taxes, I was making about 150 pounds a week. Uh, and you know, we were living in, in, um, in my, my wife's uh, parents' house and uh, just, you know, 
just really getting in the way all the time. And uh, and I so what I started doing was I started getting uh, the newspaper at six o'clock every morning. I would get several newspapers and I would start sending out CVs to every place I could, regardless of whether or not I was qualified. So like I applied, I applied for like you know be a salesperson at Gillette, uh, you know uh, you know. Man night manager at Blockbuster Video, uh, all this kind of stuff, and um, and in the end, you know, uh, I did that for two months, and it, it really started to get to the point where you start to feel like, you know, am I just wasting my time, and uh, you know, am I just wasting my time and money? Because it was it was you know stamps and everything back then, so email wasn't as prevalent, although it was, but I think I just didn't know it, you know, so I was still sending out, printing out, you know, CVs and sending those out. And, uh, and in that entire two month period, I've got, I had three interviews, right? So I had, I was, I was interviewed as a, a manager, a night manager at Blockbuster Video. Uh, so I'm still working nights at the dairy packing yogurt. Uh, and I got an interview at a Blockbuster Video and, uh, and I didn't get it. I was so devastated I didn't get it. You know, I was thought, um, and then I also got an interview at, um, for Thames Trains as a ticket collector. And that paid really low. You know, it was just like, uh, but I really sold it, you know, and, and I, you know, I, ne I nearly got that job. Uh, and then one day I got this, uh, I got a letter in the post from, uh, from Barclays Capital and they had this big open evening and for some reason they liked to look at my CV and they, they gave me a test to take and I had to take this test, like it was a written test and you had to swear you did it only the certain amount of time period. So I did it. It was math based and math is not my strong suit and I sent it in. So. You know, so, so miraculously, they called me up and said that you know, they'll invite me to this open evening, which was like you know a week from from that day, uh, and it was like there was going to be like 70 people there, and it was gonna, they were trying to find new talent and everything. So at the time, I didn't even have a suit. I mean, I had a suit, but it was like one I got like while I was in the army, so it was like several years before. So I went to a charity shop, uh, which is like a um, like a thrift store. Right uh, in the states, we call it a thrift store. Here's a charity shop, and I bought an, an old suit for like uh, eight pounds, which is, I guess, is about no, actually, it was like six pounds. It was about ten dollars, right? I remember at the time because that was like a lot of money for me, uh, and uh, and so I got that and a, and a tie for like a dollar, uh, and um, and I wore my army shoes, and um, and somebody had said that somebody had hinted that they'll know that they're army shoes, like my army dress shoes, and I was really nervous about that. So then on the night, on the night of this thing, I had to take a night off from the dairy, and to, to give you an idea what the dairy was like, you know, you go and you punch a clock, you put on white overalls, white uh, Wellington boots, uh, rubber gloves, and a, and a white paper hat, uh, like a net hat, and you just go in there and you're just, basically you're just doing what a machine should, should be able to do but can't. So you, you pack the boxes, when the box is full, you put it on the crate, pack, 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 uh, for eight hours a night. So, so I took a night off and then I go to Canary Wharf, which is, you know, if you've never been to Canary Wharf, it's a big financial district in London and you know, these big tall buildings and uh, you know, and then I go to, uh, to 10 South Colonnade, oh no, 10 North Colonnade, uh, no, it was five South Colonnade, well, one of the, Barclays Capitol buildings at the time, and uh, and I went in there and you know, big marble columns, you know, lot of lot of money, and I, you go in there and I'm I'm just feeling really self conscious about this suit, and I spent a lot on the train ticket, which you know I just could not afford, I and mean, we just didn't have that kind of money, so I go in there and I remember sitting there in the lobby, uh, and somebody you know makes conversations with me, because uh, I never make conversation with anybody else, and it, and he, he talks about, um, you know, he says, oh, so where are you from? And I said. And I, I didn't know what to do. I felt like such a fraud. I just thought I'd be honest. And I said, oh yeah, I'm, I, I, I live in Wantage. I, I, I work in a dairy. I pack, you know, a factory. He goes, oh, and he looked kind of confused. He goes, oh, I'm a project manager up in Glasgow. And uh, I just came down here for, the, for this event to, to hopefully get a job. And, and, and as I started talking to more people there, like as we're waiting for the interviews to start, uh, you know, everybody, I mean, everybody was more, way more qualified than me. You know, it was like, it was one of those things where, Never in the history of my entire life have I felt like a bigger fraud than being in that room. Uh, but in the end, you know, so there were two interviews from two different people. I went in there, they'd ask like problem solving questions like, uh, tell me uh, five reasons why a man manhole cover is round and stuff like that. Or, you know, tell us about a time where you had to improve a process or something like that. And I, I gave them the stupid story about moving a table in the dairy to make the, you know, to make it faster to rather than have to put it directly on the crate. Uh, and, you know, and, 
And I thought, and I left there thinking, man, that was just like, it was just like, it was like stepping into another world. It was like, you know, and you think back to the high school teacher, you know, you think, this is not for you. You know, this is for other people. This is for people who went to Harvard or Oxford, right? But, you know, the next day, you know, I get a call and they say, how do you think you did? And I said, I don't know. I think, you know, I think they liked me, but, you know, I, I really don't know. Uh, and then they said, that, well, they would like to make you an offer for 26K, right? And, and that's when, and that moment was when the entire life changed. I mean, and that was, you know, that was going someplace to where, someplace I didn't belong, right? So that was, you know, my whole uh, outlook on life was, I, I, I'll be working in a shop, I'll be a, a blockbuster guy or something like that. And uh, so I can remember just running through the town thinking, because at the time I thought 26K is like a huge amount of money. I mean, Blockbusters was only going to pay 11, right? So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I ran into town and I, you know, and, you know, and they said, well, you know, when would you like to start? And I said, can I start tomorrow? And they said, well, we kind of need to set things up here a little bit. So I agreed to start in a week's time. I, I gave my notice at the dairy and, and I went back to the dairy and everybody at the dairy was like, they all said the same thing. So, oh, that's because you're American. You know, they, people like Americans. Yeah, yeah. It's not surprising you got that. You know, you know regardless of the fact that of all the you know, hundreds of CVs I sent out over the the two months. But uh, so so when I started at that job, again, no qualifications, no computer science degree. I, I started with a manager who was not the guy who who had hired me, and I don't think he liked me very much. I mean, I was pretty certain. I mean, from the outset, he says, "I don't know what to do with you." Yeah, because I was, you know, and I was going in there and I was, I was really trying. And then, you know, and then somebody had to show me. So they gave me a task, which was to do something with Excel and Access. And my first question was, well, what's the difference between Access and Excel? And he looked at me like, he was just like, you know, flabbergasted. He goes, well, Access is a database and Excel is a spreadsheet. And I said, Oh, okay, right. I didn't know what that meant. I had no idea what that meant. You know, they, they were both the same to me, right? So anyway, so there was so there was this period where I realized I was a fish out of water. I felt like a fraud every day. Uh, and the, the nice thing about that job was that they had books that you could borrow, computer books, and they had a learning library. And I started reading everything I could get my hands on. I started going on MSDN every day, which was the Microsoft site. And I started reading everything I could. And I, you know, and I started you know, just making sure that there was nothing. I didn't want to tell anybody I, I don't know ever again. So I started, um, you know, and I had this two hour commute you know, in and out. So it was four hours commuting each day. And that's when the trains were running well. Uh, so I was, um, I would check out these big books and I would be reading them and people say, I don't know how you could read that. They're so dry. And they were, but you know, after a while you start getting into them. Uh, and then I started to become, you know, after a few months, you know, people were asking my advice on things. And after a year, you know, there were people who were, you know, they didn't know that I'd come from the dairy. I, and so, you know, I, I started to establish myself. I started going for Microsoft qualifications. Uh, and, uh, it, but there was still that, that feeling that that high school teacher say, you know, that, that making you feel like, this is not for you. This is not where you need to be, right? So, and then, you know, and I remember there was this one guy who was really, really good. And this one thing, you, you start to gravitate towards people who are really passionate about coding and their job. Uh, and there's some people who they talk about, you know, like, oh, Eric, I did this code like this, like this, this, this. And then you go, oh, yeah, cool, I did this. And there's other people who go, I don't know, you got a bunch of nerds or whatever, you know, because they're just, they're just doing their job. You know, they're, you know, they're there where they are. That, that's where they're going to finish. So, you know, as meeting people like that and they really inspire you. Uh, and then like you say, after a year, you know, people didn't know about that background. And it was like, and I, but I would work like ridiculous hours too, uh, because, you know, I was not supposed to be there. You know, I was like, I was clinging, you know, in my mind, I was clinging onto the bottom rung of the ladder and trying to keep up with everybody else. Uh, and, uh, and I can remember one guy, he, he was always asking me questions. He was giving me advice. He goes, oh, I did this thing. What do you think of this? How, how would you handle this? I go, okay. Oh, I do this, all this, whatever. And then one night at the pub, I, you know, I told him about being at the dairy and, uh, and he wouldn't talk to me anymore. It was just like, you know, because, you know, somehow I had cheated. I had gone around that. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it was, it was really like, so then I stopped telling people that it, it was, it stopped. I stopped telling them about the fact that I, that I, I didn't have a computer science degree, that I was just, you know, that I was keeping up. 
Years later, I read uh, Mark Cuban's book. Uh, I, I can't remember what it's called, but he, he talked about when he started out and he got a sales job in computers. Uh, you know, just, and, and he said he'd read the manual every day. And he said, you make the assumption that everybody else does the same thing. And, I, and that's exactly what I thought. I thought, I, would, I read everything I could. I kept up on everything that was current, everything that was latest. And I, I thought everybody else was doing the same. And the fact of the matter is that they weren't. You know, most people don't read a computer book. Most people don't see that maintenance, that maintenance going forward. No, most people don't see, you know, I need to be one step ahead of the curve. Most people don't consider their jobs, you know, about to be ended. I mean, one of the things that motivates me when I was working was, you know, that there's always somebody who could come and take my job at any time. I mean, there's people overseas who could take my job all the time. So, uh, and, and eventually I went on to other things and, and a, a constant in my life is getting into these situations where you think, I'm not, I shouldn't be here. You know, I, you know, you move from, so that was getting into IT and this is a really long story and I really apologize about that. Uh, but there was that, that whole story where you think back to those, to those teachers who said you shouldn't be there. And, and, I, and I think about those people, the dairy who, you know, when I told them, I thought, you know, this is, you know, it was, you know, it can be done. You know, you don't need to have that degree and you, or you don't need to have all that. And, it's, and one person I remember, he says, I'm really inspired by you. I'm going to do that. But he never did. He never sent off the CVs and you, cause you don't want to feel stupid, you know, like, and that was one thing you're sending off, you know, 10 CVs a day to 20 CVs a day. And you just, and you waste money on stamps that you don't have. And the biggest fear is that I'm just wasting my time. And we, you know, it's a fear that we have all the time anyway. You know, every time we release an app, you know, we spend too much time on that, but I think, am I just wasting my time? But that's, that's the game. You know, if you, you know, if you're applying for a job and 1% of people say yes, or 1% of companies say yes, then you need to apply to a hundred jobs, right? And, and even then later on, I would, I would talk to people who were miserable in their jobs and they would say, uh, and I'll say, have you looked for something else? And they, they'd always say the same thing. So, no, I'm waiting to hear back on something. And so they will send off like one CV, wait to hear back, one CV and my whole approach to that, even now when I do look for a job and I haven't looked for a job in years, right? Is, uh, you know, is I, I, to be nerdy and computer, computerish, I have a, an asynchronous mindset, right? I, I don't just fire off one and then wait for it to come back and come back. I fire off a hundred and then I deal with the callbacks, you know, and most don't return the calls. Most don't return the emails, but you know, that's, you yeah, know, that's always the way that I've operated. You know, that's why we have so many apps. That's why we have, you know, so many things. When I reach, when we do outreach, you know, I don't spend too much time on one, uh, trying to get one client in. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with several at a time and try to, you know, bring some in. And, you know, and there's, but there's still, there's still this gnawing feeling, you know, this thing that we, the, you know, those people at the dairy had. And, you know, it, and, and I can see it because I still have that in a, in a lot of ways. You think back to that teacher who said, if you don't do well in school and you don't get a degree and you don't um, you don't apply yourself, then you will just end up working this menial job. And I thought, you know, and and there's so much in life that you think that's not for me. But you know that there's no reason why you can't have it. It's just there's a subconscious thing saying that that's for them. That's not for me. And that's very much what being an app developer is like. You know, you see other apps that can make it, and you think, you know, that's for them, but not for me. You think, no, no, wait a second. I'm going to try. I'm going to try even though I know I'm going to fail. Or even though that I know that I might fail. Or, you know, I'm going to keep trying and keep trying and I'm going to keep battering at those walls until they give in. You know, you know the overpass is not where it should be. It might move slower than it should. There, you know, there's certain self-confidence things that I have, you know, that, that I need to get past. But, you know, every day, every day, I keep battering at those walls. So, a long answer to a short question. God, it's a long video. I don't care what kind of degree people have. I pray that I meet somebody who notices the opportunity that they get and they take, you know, they latch on with both hands and they make it theirs, right? One of the things that, you know, what I would love to see with Overpass is hiring somebody who maybe they're not fully qualified. You know, maybe they don't have a CS degree in three years experience. Maybe that's something I have to give them. But when they leave Overpass, they, they can get a much higher paying job and they're better at it than when they left the same way I was when I, when I was given that first opportunity. Long video, sorry about that. I don't blame you if you didn't make it this far, uh, but 
that's just my opinion. And you may disagree with it. And, and I can understand it. If you have a computer science degree and you worked up those ranks, I can see you being resentful towards me because, because of that. But I don't, I don't think the degree matters as much as a lot of people do. I think it is the, the, uh, the determination and, the, and always knowing that it's not somebody else's job. It's not somebody else's responsibility to make sure you keep your job. It's your responsibility. And, um, and I, anyway, that's it. That's, you know, I don't care if they have a degree. That's my opinion. And uh, man, I'll talk to you guys on Monday.